Hello. Hi, Olivia. How are you? Welcome to Yorkie Storytime Live. And I am braiding my hair to get it out of the way so I can actually fix my baby's hair as well. Hi, Simba. Simba, you don't want to get groomed today, do you? Oh, it looks like Alfie is the first one today, as always. Poppy, what are you doing back there, honey? Come on. I'm going to tilt this down a little bit. Hi, guys. So who is on with me today? <laughs> Hi, Olivia. Thanks so much for joining. I love your little profile picture with the rainbow colors. It's so cute. Oh, it looks like Simba is going to try to steal the toys from the other babies. Hi, Carol. How are you? How is your little princess Poppy doing? I know you have been super, super busy getting your house all um, safe and puppy proof for your baby. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? Um, Tiffany, thank you so much for your nice um, comment on the APL video that I just made. I had so much fun making that video. Um, and those are my favorite shoes. So I was really excited to share that. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe it's been four weeks already, Carol. That flew by. I feel like it's been two weeks. That is absolutely crazy. And I'm so glad that she's such a joy. You guys must just be absolutely falling in love with her. Alfie's hair is, for whatever reason, so, so tangled today. He just got his bath yesterday. Um, I was at work, but Skylar always gives him bath time on Saturdays. And then I kind of like untangle them on Sundays because they have their hair in a scrunchie. Carol, I just can't believe it. I feel like the time flew by. I remember the week that you said that you were getting her and I, I just don't even understand how it can already have been that long. It is absolutely wild. Guys, thank you so much for hitting. I see some of you guys are hitting the like button and um, letting me know that you're enjoying this video and also letting YouTube know. And I really, really appreciate that. Anytime you do that, it makes such a big difference for me. Oh my gosh, Carol, don't they keep you just like jumping around and running around so, so crazy when they're babies? Um, it's been so long since I've had a little puppy, but they keep me super, super busy. It's crazy. Olivia says, I already have a question. That's great, Olivia. It says, what shampoo do you recommend? BioSilk for dog silk therapy puppy tearless shampoo is the one I'm using. Um, I actually have some links that are in my video and they are my two favorite shampoos, Olivia. Um, if you can, if you decide to order one of the shampoos, please do make sure to use my links because I do get paid a commission when people buy through my links, which is super helpful um, for me. And it helps me to keep making videos and to fund my videos. Um, I really like the Isle of Dogs Tearless Puppy Shampoo. Um, if you're looking for something tearless, it smells so, so good. Um, it's very, very gentle. Um, and what I, what I have often done is just like, it doesn't come in a bottle with a pump. So I often just get a larger bottle with a pump and put it in there because I find it so much easier when I am giving my dogs a bath to actually use a pump as opposed to, um, as opposed to just like trying to pick up the bottle with wet hands and squeeze out shampoo. Um, maybe it's just because I own a hair salon and I'm used to using professional bottles where everything has a pump, but the pump just makes all the difference. Who's back there? Hi, Poppy. How's my good girl? Oh, I'm so glad that you love health and fitness everything, Tiffany. Um, I was waiting to make that video for a few weeks and I'm always also trying to figure out how to film like different angles and things in my apartment. There's not really a ton of places to film because it's pretty dark um, in the back where my bedroom is. Um, so I can film in this room, but there's just like certain things that make it hard to film from different angles. So I tried something different. I was actually super happy, super pleased with how it turned out. And I, I just love the shoes. I love that I can throw them in the washing machine and they always look like new. It makes me so happy. Um, I try not to buy tons and tons of clothes, but I do take really good care of the ones that I have so that they're always looking nice. Um, I feel like it's always Sunday when I talk to you guys, so no one really ever sees me in especially nice clothes, but I always just want to be um, very 
I always want to be like very comfortable in things because Sundays are my first day off of the week. And I was working so hard. I've been really, really busy with clients and things at the salon, which I'm so grateful for. Um, I'm actually booked through June at my salon. Uh, so things are really going back to normal where I'm always busy and things like that. Um, I'm really happy about it, but it just keeps me like extra, extra busy. So sorry that I have a very, very, very minimal makeup today. Um, I just slept a little bit late and went to the gym and had a great workout. Um, and then I just threw myself together very, very casually and per usual, I guess. I think you'll really like it. So Olivia, um, I, I don't even know, but the smell of the puppy shampoo from Isle of Dogs is very, very gentle. I don't really like smells generally speaking, but it's super, super gentle. And it smells like I used to get these beautiful German baby dolls every birthday growing up. And it smells like the German baby dolls did. I don't know how to describe it, but almost like a very, very subtle hint of vanilla. Um, and it's amazing. Um, Marcus asked if I am open to getting a fourth Yorkie. No, definitely not Marcus. Um, I think that three Yorkies is really as many as I could possibly have and walk comfortably. Um, and you know, sometimes I do walk my Yorkies separately, but I think like by the time you would get to having four, it would just be hard to give them the attention that they need, the love that they need. If somebody had a health problem, it would start to get really tricky. Um, and I also have my cat Simba who keeps me pretty darn busy. So I have enough Yorkies at this point. I did, you know, just very quickly, I thought about possibly getting another one. And then I just decided that I really had enough dogs. So we've got Simba, he keeps us really busy. And just, I think, you know, it gets to the point where Yorkies do, they do take a while, even if, um, say, they use potty pads and you're always changing those or you're cleaning up your home and things like that. Um, so I think three is just perfect for me. Um, it was very tempting when I knew that Alfie was having puppies because I knew they would be really special. But I think I can only, I have so many different things going on. And I think at some point, when you spread yourself too thin, instead of adding joy to your life, um, it just adds stress. So I don't want to add stress to my life, only joy. And I know that one more Yorkie would actually be stressful for me. So I've got enough Yorkies. And I can't even imagine, like, what are the chances that I would ever find someone to work for me if I had even more Yorkies? I feel like whoever I would hire would be super, super overwhelmed. Hello, Jasmine. Welcome. It's so nice to have you on today. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much for saying hello. Um, Olivia said, Carol, are you making food at home for the new pup? Um, if not, what are you feeding her? Um, and Olivia wants to know, what does everyone feed their pups? Um, so it's interesting, Olivia. I was just talking to the people at Just Food for Dogs and they were actually saying that a lot of times it's better to use a puppy food or if you absolutely had to have a food from Just Food for Dogs, that it might be worthwhile to actually call them and have their vet formulate something with the extra nutrients that puppies need to grow. Um, so that was what Just Food for Dogs said. And I think I do think it would get a little bit tricky to be making your puppy its food because puppies and kittens need a lot of extra nutrients because they're growing so quickly. And so those extra nutrients help to support their growth. And what happens a lot when people just kind of wing it and make food themselves is that it's not always complete. Um, I know that when Teddy had an autoimmune disease, there was a period of time where I made his food for him. And it really, it was all that I could think of to sort of quiet his stomach and and you know, get him to keep food down, but it really, it didn't have enough calcium and things like that. So eventually he did go on a more complete dog food because it was actually causing problems because he was lacking some of the nutrients that he actually needed. So it is always important to, to remember that dogs do have certain nutritional needs, especially when they're growing. And you just need to make sure that you're actually hitting those requirements so that your dog can grow and develop as best as possible. 
Oh, that's so great, Carol. You have a nice little mix of different things. And I'm sure that the Just Food for Dogs is like a fabulous, fabulous treat for little Poppy. I love, by the way, that we both have poppies. I think that is the best thing. Oh, that's so smart. Olivia says, I have a personal pet nutritionist who formulates dog food. Well, there you go. As long as you do something like that, then you're definitely on the right track. I know that a lot of people don't take the time to do that, and then their dog might be deficient in something. But as long as you have a nutritionist who really knows what they're doing, that's absolutely great. So smart, Carol. You too. It's And that's why I'm always telling people to check with their vet on so many different things. Um, as much as I know about Yorkies, I still always check with my vet because, you know, my vet knows more than I do for sure. Um, so he's always really, really helpful to me. He's a great, great vet and he really just loves the dogs. So Lola and Poppy actually had their eighth birthday this week, which I, I can't believe it. I feel like eight years with your little babies just goes by in the blink of an eye. Um, so I know we really just need to take every day and appreciate our babies and give them the best care that we can because their lives just go by so fast. Um, I remember the day that I was going to pick up Lola and my mom actually went with me. It was so cute. I was like, mom, it's so nice you're driving all the way to the breeder for us to get um, Lola. And she said, well, of course I'm going to drive with you to get Lola. Um, she's my, she's my newest grandchild. Um, and that was really always how my mom looked at her. Um, she knew that I wasn't going to have kids. And so she's always just treated my dogs as her kids, her grandkids. Um, anyway, so it was really sweet. But I remember Lola being little and how she would like rough house with Teddy and jump on him and things like that. And now she still acts like a puppy. I mean, she's still got that like crazy puppy energy. But at the same time, she's eight years old. So time has really flown with her. And even Alfie is four and time has flown with him too. So I think just taking advantage of every single day, um, you know, always taking your dogs on a nice walk and spending that time to be with them and give them the best life possible is really important because we just get so many more years than our dogs do. So anyway, birthdays are always bittersweet for me because you know, I celebrate every single year that I have them, but I also don't want them to get any older. Um, I'm sure that many of you probably feel a similar way to how I feel too. Tiffany says, hello, Olivia. I home cook for my palm. I add in um, ground eggshell, organic cod liver oil, organ meat, rotate proteins, and a little vegetables. Tiffany, you are so good with nutrition. That's awesome. Um, Olivia says I do the same. Also adding supplements is a great option that I do. I love how much research you guys do. It's just exactly um, the same way that I like to do things. Um, just really taking time to make sure that you're doing the right thing for your baby. So we had not really, I won't say an eventful week. I don't know about you guys, but I just don't feel like in, in these times, like with the world kind of being a little crazy, weeks are not as eventful as they used to be. Um, but last week, I think I had told you guys on the live stream that my dishwasher stopped working and the dishwasher that came with this condo was so old. So it kept like it would open and then it would shut it. So it would open and stop working. And then I kept having to shut it for it to work. And finally last week, it just completely stopped. So I ordered a new, um, a new dishwasher. There's a place called Yale Appliance outside of Boston and they were super nice. And I got a, I think it's called a Miele. Um, and so anyway, they brought our new dishwasher on Friday morning. And it was so funny because the dogs and the cat we're going crazy when the workmen came and um, I had to put the dogs in the back bedroom with like a little baby gate up and things. And they were barking the entire time. And then the cat jumped the baby gate and was trying to like get into the hole where the dishwasher was. So it was really kind of a funny morning, but we finally have a dishwasher and um, also kind of something, I don't know if you guys have seen this before, but um, when they pulled out the dishwasher, um, the old one, there was a bunch of rat poison under the dishwasher. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever seen rat poison or know what rat poison looks like, and maybe it's just in the city more than other places, but it's um, 
it's a green color. I'm trying to think of how to describe the green. It's like a very artificial, you know, almost like a astroturf green color. I'm going to see if I can just find the color to show you guys. The only reason I'm telling you is um, just that it's a really good thing to know what it looks like when you have a dog, um, simply because someone actually showed it to me. I think it was this summer because they did find it in another spot and I had never seen it. So I had no idea what it looks like. Um, and I wouldn't have known what it was if I saw it outside. Um, the particular kind of rat poison that was here originally when the pest control person came and saw it. He told me that um, vitamin K is the antidote for rat poison. Um, it looked like this, just so you guys know what the color is. Um, anyway, he told me that vitamin K was the antidote and I hope that you guys obviously never run into it, but I just thought I would share that. I always just try to share anything pertinent as far as safety. Um, but anyway, I completely cleaned it up. It's out of there. Um, I feel like, I hope it's not in other places. I think I've looked everywhere I possibly could. Um, but I'm glad that the dogs were in the back bedroom as well, because, um, I was surprised when I saw that under the dishwasher. Um, so anyway, just wanted to share it with you. So in case you guys ever run across it, whether you're on a walk or in a new um, living situation, it's good to know what it looks like because obviously you don't want your dogs getting into it. If they do get into it, um, I believe they can get a shot of vitamin K, but it's worth asking your vet about. Um, just wanted to share that as it was something that could have been really dangerous for my dogs um, had they not been, you know, all safely in the back bedroom. Olivia says, I personally have never found a kibble that I felt comfortable feeding my puppy. Personally, not for me. I don't think kibble is ever a good option because it is so processed. Um, I pretty much agree with you, Olivia. There's a few um, on, in the book that I recommend all the time called The Truth About Pet Food. I believe there's a few maybe dehydrated kibbles that I think could be okay, but almost every single kibble, you're right, is not healthy for your dogs. So true. Um, and Tiffany agrees with her. Um, I know, Carol, isn't that so crazy? It's I mean, I know we're in a city apartment, but I don't think it's even legal to have loose rat poison. So it must have been a really bad pest control person that would have left it out loose like that because obviously it could have been really harmful. So I'm glad that I cleaned it up. Um, it was also just full of, um, there was a ton of sawdust and shavings and things from when whoever the contractor that must have originally done this up. Um, you know, fixed up this apartment, did it, and they must have just left all those shavings and then put the dishwasher on. So I'm always kind of surprised when I see um, that certain contractors do really lazy work and they don't clean up after themselves. Um, and I think that that can cause health problems. Like you wouldn't really want wood shavings underneath your dishwasher. It's just not healthy. So anyway, cleaned it up. Now I have a new one. Um, I have to say it made me just want to renovate everything in the apartment. Um, seeing it was like just have a new dishwasher felt fabulous. So anyway, it was really, it was exciting. Um, Jasmine says we use taste of the wild kibble since our Yorkie Kirby is still three months old and free fed for now. Have you heard anything about it? Um, Jasmine, as I always recommend, I would definitely just tell you to read the book. Um, it's the truth about pet food. If it's in there, I would say it's a good food. If it's not in there, I probably wouldn't feed it, but um, definitely do the research. That book is awesome. Probably costs about $10 and it will be the best $10 you've ever spent. And when I say book, it's literally like 10 or 15 pages. So it's something you can flip through and really find out about the best foods, but it is so, so helpful. And I, I recommend it all the time. I don't make any money off of people buying that book but I think it's one of those important things to do your research so that you can find a food that is safe for your dog. I mean, I know I've heard different things about different pet foods, but I always, um, I always share my resources that really will tell you the, the best thing to have. I try not to say anything negative about any companies because I would rather focus on the positive, but, um, I would say to definitely check it out in the book and see what you find. Um, they may say great things. They they may not say anything at all. Hi, Poppy. Oh, Poppy is so sweet. You are such a good girl. 
I love when my weekend starts and I get to just spend time with the babies. So guys, who is on with us today? I see that we've got about 15 people on here and I always love it when everybody takes time to say hi. Um, Misty, I'm so sorry, Misty Moon. I missed you saying hello, but hello, Misty Moon. It's nice to have you here. Your screen name is beautiful. Um, don't be shy if you're popping on to Yorkie Storytime Live. Please do say hello. Um, I'm just brushing Poppy and beautifying her. I mean, but can she be any more beautiful? You are such a good girl. So the cat is still continuing to terrorize the dogs. Um, I think he's just trying to play. I really do. But this morning, everybody was walking down, as in my pack of dogs was walking down the hallway, and the cat just made like one jump and tried to jump on the pack of dogs. Um, so needless to say, they did not like that. Poppy is the sweetest girl. I feel like she's just she's quiet and she's sweet and oh she's just such a little darling i love her so so much come here poppy so after i got my new dishwasher i started sort of brainstorming about my apartment and originally jeff and i were thinking of knocking down there's like a little corner wall and there's an opening into our kitchen and we were thinking of when we renovate to knock down that wall but it's really interesting. Everybody always says that you should live in a place. And then after you live in a place, you should start to make decisions about what you feel like fixing up and what you don't feel like fixing up and um, or, or just how you want to do things. And it's interesting, but I think I've started to actually like the fact that my kitchen is not completely open to everything else. Um, for one, when I film, I think it just makes this room a little bit neater because when you have an open kitchen and I don't know if you guys have open kitchens or closed kitchens but I feel like when you have a open kitchen you just have to keep everything perfect because you can see every single surface um so I just don't know what we'll do but I think we may just renovate everything in place and that that might actually be the easier you know the easier option in the long run so kind of interesting how when you live in a place you don't always feel the same about your renovations as you did in the beginning. Um, but I am meeting with my architect this week because we are going to go over plans for the master bathroom and costs and things like that to see if we can do it this year. Um, because it's just, it could really, really, really use a facelift. It's a really old bathroom. And I think it would just make that whole back bedroom area so much nicer to have a beautiful bathroom. Um, have any of you guys renovated your homes during during this past year, I feel like a lot, a lot of people were doing different home improvements. So I'm so curious if you guys did any at your places. <coughs> Excuse me. Hello, Ruth. How are you? It's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. Ruth says the babies are so cute and sweet, adorable. They say thank you so much and they love their time when we get to come on and chat with everybody. I think they're always so happy when my time off starts for the week and I can spend a little bit more time with them. It's not a beautiful day outside, but that's okay. It's not a terrible day outside. Um, and we are going to go out on a walk in just a little while. It's kind of overcast and chilly in Boston today. Oh, Alfie you looks so handsome. He is just the most handsome little dog. I can't take it. What a good girl you are, Poppy. You are such a Yes, you are. There you go. Hi, buddy. Where's Lola? I think Lola is definitely going to be the one that needs the most attention today. So my life has just been a little bit less eventful lately just because of the way the world has been, but I have been working out a lot at the gym still, and um, I went and worked out today. I'm getting stronger. I feel like every single week I'm getting a little bit stronger, which is making me really happy. Um, I also decided, um, so Jeff 
is going to be home, you know, all the time. And so we're going to start making our meals instead of me getting the meals delivered um, and dropped off, which will be an interesting difference. Um, I, I have loved getting my meals made for me, but I feel, and I don't know if you guys would have this too, um, but I don't really get to choose exactly what they are. I do have some input, um, but I'm kind of a picky eater. And I think I've found that I would rather just choose what I get to eat because I eat pretty simply and pretty healthfully. And I think it's kind of hard for someone else to anticipate exactly what you would like to eat. Um, it was definitely a time saver because this has been a really busy time where I had a lot of stuff that I had to take care of, but I actually am ready to start cooking again and looking for recipes and doing things a little bit differently. So anyway, I paused the meal service and I think it's going to go into, I wanted to give notice so that it wasn't rude. Um, so I gave two weeks notice um, and then I'm going to start cooking my own meals again. So I'm kind of excited about it. My mom sent me um, a website with some recipe ideas and I often cook paleo things when I'm cooking, um, but I'm looking forward to starting to cook for myself again. I think that'll be really fun. Poppy, you're such a good girl. She loves to get rushed. Hi, sweetie. You're such a good girl. Come on, look at her. She little fat legs. So guys, I'm so curious what, what um, if you feel comfortable sharing, um, what city or what state are you guys in and what is it like where you are? Have things opened up? Are you able to do things again? Um, I'm always so curious about what it's like in different parts of the world right now. I feel like Boston is one of the strictest places, but I know not every single place is. Oh my gosh, Carol, don't even worry. Thank you so much for saying hello. Um, go and take care of Poppy and definitely can't be on a live stream all the time, can you? But thank you for stopping by. It's always so great to see you, Carol. Oh, Poppy looks so gorgeous. Come here. Come on, I'm gonna fix you up. Yes, that's such a good girl. Look at that. What a good girl. Oh my goodness, look at Poppy. She's just so pretty. So nice. Hi, Kristen, how are you? Thank you so much for joining. Um, Kristen says, I have a three month old Shorky and she is super wiggly. How do you get your pups to settle down to be brushed? Um, so Kristen, I think it just took, it took a while for them. I know that when they were, I mean, I actually didn't get Alfie or Poppy who I'm holding when they were three months old and both of them were show dogs. So they were both really, really used to being brushed. Um, so I can't really take credit for Alfie or Poppy. Um, for Lola, I feel like she just got used to it over time. So I don't think it happened. I don't think there's like a magical thing that you can do where you just um, have a calm dog. I think it just takes a while. And once they get used to you brushing them constantly, and um, in, in my case, my dogs know that I'm going to take them out after. So they look forward to me brushing them because they know that right after they get brushed, they're going to go out on a really fun walk together and they're going to, going to get to bark at all the things outside. So I think mine probably enjoy it for those reasons. Um, but it just gets better as you go. Just do little mini grooming sessions and um, be as gentle as possible and you know take your time to brush through those tangles and things like that and eventually your shorty will definitely get more used to it olivia says 
Saunderstown, Rhode Island here, still pretty tight, but people are getting vaccines and we're loosening up a ton in the coming months. That's so exciting, isn't it? I'm just, I'm really, really ready for things to loosen up. Um, there are still masks outside in Boston and I just, I don't think there really need to be masks outside, but um, I think it's just very, very strict here. And I just really miss like the feeling of fresh air uh, outside when I'm breathing and on my face. It's so nice. Um, Jasmine says, thanks for the book recommendation. I'm actually watching from Lithuania and Europe, so the book wouldn't contain many of our brands. Mm, safest thing is to eventually cook myself when he's grown up. Oh, uh, that's, that's probably very, very true that it wouldn't contain, um, many of your brands. Um, it's still worth reading. She has, um, just search the truth about pet food and see some of her blogs and things because she does have really good information. So I think she can still really give you a lot of good information to find something yourself. Um, but I did not think about that, but it does not apply to all over the world. So thank you so much for clarifying that. That was a very smart thing to say. Kristen says, okay, great. Thanks for the advice. I'm in Toronto, Ontario, and things are super tightly locked down right now. Um, stay at home order and no stores open. Wow. I did not know that it was that tightly locked down. That is so, so hard. Um, gosh, that's, I'm so sorry. Cause that's really stressful. I know that when it was like that here, um, it, it's just hard. I mean, I think like perhaps I'm taking for granted that there are still quite a few things open, although not as much as I would like. Um, there's still a lot that I can do. And I'm also really lucky because of course I can still go to work at my hair salon and things, which is amazing. And I get to talk to you guys, which is amazing too. Um, Edwin Town says, hi from Germany. Hello from Germany. It's so nice to have you. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to get Lola, who is going to be the biggest disaster of all. Lola, look at her little face. Do you have a messy face? Do you have a messy face? You're a pretty girl. I don't have a favorite, but I mean, she could maybe kind of be my favorite. She's just such a little baby, but they're all my favorites. As long as I'm holding any one of them, they're my favorite at that time. Olivia says, yeah, yep, huge fan of cooking at home. I would cook for my human child, so why not for my fur baby? It makes so much sense, Olivia. Um, Olivia, do you have any favorite, you know, places where you find recipes and ideas and things like that? I was really, really tired of cooking um, for a while, and I think I also, I think I made a few meals that weren't that great, and it sort of, um, I think it, like, took away my confidence in my cooking, but um, the, the meals that I got the last few weeks were honestly not that they were just kind of strange combinations. Um, and I didn't really want them. So I think it just made me realize that at least I know exactly what I want so I can make like delicious salads. And, um, I love making chicken skewers. Like I have a favorite recipe, um, that's chicken with cut up apple and pineapple, um, and onions and you grill everything on skewers with like a ginger olive oil sauce and I love it so I love very very healthy and light things um so anyway I am excited to go back to cooking I know that it's a lot of work but since I have been working so so hard to get back into my best shape I do think that cooking is kind of the logical thing to do as well um as much as I can explain the different health things that I do I don't think anybody else can quite understand it as much. It would take a long, long time to really get someone to understand the exact way that I eat. So anyway, I'm looking forward to it. It's also going to save me money because I need to save money if we are going to be able to renovate our bathroom. Funny how those things work, isn't it? You have to save it from somewhere, I guess. Tiffany says Michigan was in the red again, like last weekend, but now numbers are kind of decreasing. I look forward to the day when this is behind us. I so agree, Tiffany. I feel like um, we have a lot in common and, and I think so many people are so excited about having this behind us too, but it's just been such a very crazy long time to have all of this stuff going on. And I always have like a very positive attitude about things, of course, but I definitely just miss the days of like walking into a restaurant 
without a mask on or, you know, going to my work and seeing my clients' beautiful smiles. And it's just, a, it's just been very, 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 very different in the world. And I do think that things will get back to the way that they were. And that I think we're just on the cusp of everything getting so, so much better. Um, that's truly my feeling. Like the numbers have changed so much in Massachusetts. Um, but it's just been so much longer than any of us thought. I remember talking to my husband, you know, last year when this all started about when we thought it would be better. And he was like, definitely, definitely by the summer. Um, so it's kind of crazy that we're in, you know, just coming into the next summer and it's still going on. So I look forward to it. I guess the good news is that I think that the time that I've had at home has Please don't eat things from behind me. I just realized that you were sneaking behind me. Um, but I think that the thing that's been really wonderful is the extra time that I've had with my babies. Um, so this is, I don't know about you guys, but this has really um, encouraged me to be the best dog owner that I have ever been in my entire life. So there's really always a silver lining. And that that has been my silver lining, that it has um, made me a better dog owner. I was always a good dog owner. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like there was a time where I hired a lot of people to do a lot of things for me because I was always so busy. And, um, when there was no one to work for me because we were locked down, I started being my own dog walker and just doing things more myself. And I think it's really like, it sounds so funny, but it's really deepened my relationship with my, with my puppies and we're that much closer. And so, you know, as much as it's been hard for my life sometimes because of the shutdown, I can honestly say that I think it's been better for theirs. So I'm really glad that they have benefited um, from this time with extra attention, with extra love, and with me just being extra present. Um, I think they've enjoyed the shutdown. Um, I don't think they would complain about it at all. And I'm so glad about that, that they're, that they're happy. And I'm sorry, they keep brushing dog hair off my nose. It's when I, I don't know if this happens to you guys, but when you groom, it just like sticks to your face constantly. Also, I tend to like touch my face when I'm um, holding the comb. Olivia says I use a ton of books from Amazon and from my local pet stores. I also have a pet nutritionist and love her. She is amazing. So investing in 20 to $30 for three recipes is the best. Totally. Um, I don't think I'm going to start cooking for the dogs, Olivia, but I am going to start cooking um, for for myself for sure. Um, I'm still going to get my dog food from Just Food for Dogs because they do such an amazing job and I don't have to think about it. Um, and I just, I really don't have time to do every single thing. Um, I know that one thing I want to start doing is I want to go back to doing two videos a week. And it just takes, a, every video that I post takes quite a while. So I just, I have to find the time um, in my week, you know, to do all of my little, I have so, it's amazing how many various projects I always have going on every week. So, um, that always is my thing. Like I only have so much time, but at least I am going to start cooking for myself, which I'm looking forward to, but they enjoy the, the just food for dogs so, so much. Um, so they can still continue to have that. Although I was really excited when I called them this week and found out that they even have special, um, they do custom diets for dogs, which I had no idea about. So it was kind of great that I made the phone call. Jonathan, Jonathan, thanks so much for joining. Jonathan says, um, hello, Megan. I just got my eight week old Yorkie yesterday. That's so exciting. It says it is a party Yorkie whose parents are both award winners. Any grooming tips or in general? Um, Jonathan, I think you would love, I've got a bunch. I don't know if you've joined um, my story time live, but I've got a lot of videos out um, showing some different grooming things and talking about some of my favorite products. I would definitely, definitely look through some of my videos. I've got um, a video about new puppies. I've got a video about grooming Yorkie faces. Um, and I have a video talking about what's in my little toolbox. So I would definitely recommend that you watch those videos. Um, I think that they're really good. Um, they're very informative. And I always really just talk about what is truly my favorite product. And you can decide from there what might work for you as well. Um, I think the other video that you might like to watch is my video on house training um, and how to house train a Yorkie. Um, so those are some of my favorite things, but congratulations on your dog. You must be so, so excited getting a new puppy 
is a big undertaking, but it is the most wonderful experience. So I still remember the day that I got Lola and it was amazing. She's going to get so mad at me now because she hates to have her legs groomed. I know. I know. I'm going to be so gentle with you. That's nice. What a good girl. That's so good. What a good girl. Yes, Lola. She's like, please don't groom me. Good girl. Wow. So nice. She just got her bath yesterday, so I don't understand how in the world she can already be so tangled, but she is already super, super tangled. There you go. I wonder where the cat, oh, there he is. He's in his little cat tree with one of his legs just hanging down. It's okay, Lola. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Okay, good girl. That's a baby. What a good girl. Lola is definitely, out of all three of my dogs, she is the sassiest and she's always the hardest to groom. But it's so funny because she's also the one that needs it the most. Um, so she's the one that needs it the most and she wants it the least. Poppy needs it the least and wants to get groomed the most. Right, Poppy? Are you a good girl? What a good girl. What a good girl. That's so nice, Lowell's. Your legs look beautiful. The little tiny puppy leg. How often do you guys usually groom your Yorkshire Terriers? And does anybody groom your Yorkies while you're watching Yorkie Storytime Live? I feel like it's like the nicest time just to sit and groom. Hi, Poppy. Come here. Come here. Oh my gosh, she is the cutest little dog. So my new assistant has started training and I think Skylar only has a couple of weeks left that she's gonna work for me. So that is gonna be a big change soon, um, but I'm sure it will be good. But Skylar said she's been doing really well and she seems really responsible. So I'm sure she'll take great care of the dogs. Come with Lowell's. I feel like I'm missing some of her hair. Let's see. No, it's all in. She has the messiest, messiest hair. She's so cute. What a good girl you are. So brushing and grooming your dog is so good. It also helps to keep toxins off of your dog's skin. Um, it just cleans your dog's skin and keeps it healthier. And as you can see, it totally enrages Lola. So everyone that's asking me how my dogs are so good, they're pretty good. I mean, they are, they're sweet little dogs, but even Lola does not always like to be groomed. There you go. Do you want to stop? What about if I just try to get over here on your leg? That's nice. Let's, let's go like this with your little body. Come on, don't, don't fall. Here you go. Sometimes when I stand her up, she lets me get her legs a little bit more. She's really funny. Every time I try to groom her, it's challenging, um, especially getting down to the feet. And I never want mats and things on her feet. So I try to keep on top of it. 
because once you get a mat on your dog, I feel like it is close to impossible to get it out without cutting it out. I mean, you can work at it, but it's better just to avoid getting them. Well, guys, I always love chatting with you on Sundays. If anybody has any questions before I go, please feel free to ask them. It's kind of a, everybody's a little bit quiet today. So if there's not a lot of questions, I'll probably make my story time a little bit shorter for today. Um, but I always love to hop on here and chit chat with you guys. I'm glad that all of the babies are doing well today. I do have to show you guys Simba because he's getting so, he's getting so huge at this point. I cannot believe how big my cat has gotten. He continues to try to escape at every single, you know, point when I open the door. Um, so I think he's always going to be a little escape artist. Come here, let me go get Simba. There you go. Simba, come here. You want to be in that? You want to be in the show for just a minute? Come here. Oh, isn't he gorgeous? So guys, you have to see, this is how big he is. He is absolutely, <laughs> he is so huge now. Still super sweet and cuddly. Um, even if he does jump on the dogs a little bit here and there, he's still a super, super sweet kitten and we love him so much. He weighs 10 pounds now. He eats a ton of food and he still sleeps in his own room, but he's, he's a very, very good cat. I play with him about two or three times a day and I think I'm hoping eventually they'll be really good friends. I wouldn't say they're really good friends right now, um, but everybody is tolerant of each other. There was a point where I would say, he, look how he'll fall asleep almost anywhere. There's a point where I would say that Lola was his best friend and now they're not best friends anymore. Um, she attacks him a lot. So Tiffany, I do brush Simba. I'll see if I can show you. Hold on one second. I actually often use this and Simba loves to be brushed. What a good boy. He loves to be brushed and he loves to be calmed. And in the morning when I'm doing my vacuuming, I actually vacuum Simba and he loves the vacuum. He's not afraid of it all at all. He follows me around. Are you a good boy? Come here. Come here. Let's just put you right down so you can just relax and I can show how you like to be brushed too. He doesn't love his hind end being brushed but he does tolerate being brushed really well. I guess um, Siberian cats are very, they actually like being groomed. I'm not sure exactly why, because it does feel like their fur is very, very delicate and their skin is delicate, but he loves to be brushed. He loves to be paid attention to. Are you a good boy? You wanna talk? What's your name? Sam's, Sam's. Sometimes he won't do it now, of course, because I want him to, but he talks to me all the time. Um, so Olivia, I honestly would say that look at the Simple Food Project for cat food. Their cat is super nice. I'm only giving him some of that right now because they actually did not have a kitten food. Um, his kitten food that I'm feeding him is honestly nothing to write home about, but I was not able to find a great option for kittens. Um, I wrote to the woman at The Truth About Pet Food, and there just were not a lot of good kitten options. Um, so I'm starting to integrate in the Simple Food Project, which he loves so, so much. And it's great, great quality food. But um, it just doesn't have all the nutrients that he needs because Siberian cats, he's only, I would say he's seven months right now. And Siberian cats grow and grow until about three to five years. So he needs a lot of nutrients, a lot of calories and a lot of fat. Um, so for now he's still, it's honestly, I think he's getting like Hill science diet because that's what he came with. And it would definitely not be my long-term food. I don't think that's the best quality food, but it was the kitten food that he was on and he was used to it. 
So we're phasing him out of that by the time he's a year, but he has a little bit more time. You may eat that for a little bit longer. You like it, even though it's probably not the best food for you. Hello, LJ. How are you? It's so nice to see you. I feel like you're just coming on and I'm actually just about to go off. We were just sort of closing out a little bit. I'm just sitting with Simba, but what's going on? How was your week and how is everything going with you and your family? Simba's just enjoying luxuriating here for just a minute. He is such a great little cat. I hadn't had a cat since I was 19 years old and I didn't remember how wonderful cats are but they are the sweetest, well, I guess it depends on the cat that you get, right? Um, in my experience, he has been the sweetest little creature. He loves attention, he loves cuddling, and he loves, most of all, he loves food. So the only challenging thing is when it is time for me to feed the dogs and he tries to steal their food every time. Are you gonna go get Poppy? Poppy Simba wants to get you. Simba's going to get you, Poppy. Come here, Pops. What are you doing? Well, guys, it was, uh, LJ says, everything is good. Maple went to her first vet visit, and she is 2.9 pounds. Oh, my gosh, that is so, so teeny tiny. I'm so glad that everything is going really well. Um, LJ, did you get to actually go in and see the vet, or um, is it like in Boston, you're only allowed to drop off your dog, but you don't get to see the vet? And I know that when I got him, I really like my vet. He's, he's wonderful. And so is my vet tech, Brianna. And I was so sad because I wanted to see them with my new baby so that I could really, I kind of just wanted to like share what a cute kitten he was and I couldn't kind of go in and see them. So I hope you were able to go in and see the vet. Oh, that's so nice. You're so lucky. Hopefully it will be like that soon here as well. Well, guys, it was wonderful to see you. LJ, I'm so sorry I didn't get to see you for longer, but I really, really appreciate that you popped in and it's so cute, 2.9 pounds and she is spicy. I bet she is. Lola is my spicy one. Alfie is a pushover and um, Poppy is like the most gentle little elegant lady, but Lola is spicy for sure. Ruth, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless you as well. Thank you for joining me. Um, Ruth says, God bless you and your husband and the adorable babies. Thank you. LJ, have a wonderful day. It was so great to see you. Abby, thank you so much for joining. It's so nice to see you and thank you. He really is cute. Um, Tiffany, Simba, it's kind of funny. He, okay, Yes and no. I feel like I would expect to have way, way, way more fur on me than Simba sheds. Um, it's really not that bad. And I think probably part of it is that he gets groomed and he gets vacuumed. And then I have this amazing little tool. So I'm going to show you. I'm wearing black leggings. And if I get, I don't know if you can, I'm sure you can see if I get closer. I do have fur on them, but hold on one second. So I just wanted to show you guys really quickly. This is the best tool ever. I got it off of Amazon. It is called a Chom Chom. And I know that for those of us that have Yorkies, we probably don't need something like this. Um, but Tiffany, it's amazing. You can actually, so it opens up and it traps the hair for whatever in there. And when you use this, it actually works better than a lint roll because you're not constantly replacing your little lint roller strips. And all you have to do is just take it and run it on your clothing, on your, on your sofa, anything like that. And literally it gets every single thing. And then you just, I just vacuum out the little chamber but um, this is absolutely amazing. So I got one. And then right after I got one, my mom got one. Um, my friend Tammy got one. It is incredible. So for any of you guys that do have pets that shed, it's great. Um, but Tiffany, the shedding is not bad. And I just, I mean, I just use my Chom Chom on anything black before I go out. But it is amazing. I'll actually, I'm going to add it to my links because I love it so much. And my mom was like, it can't work. It can't be that good. 
it's so good. And then you don't have to buy lint rollers, which are obviously such a waste and you just throw them away and, you know, kind of ruin the environment right after Earth Day. So I think you'll love it, Tiffany. It's great. I will, um, after I get off this live, I'll add it to the links on this video, but I think it's awesome. It saves my life because he does shed a, not, not nearly as much as I would think, but he does shed a little bit. So, well, enjoy your beautiful day. Sorry that I was such a slouch in my slouchy, slouchy sweatsuit today, but I just wanted to be comfy and chit chat with you guys and Simba and all of the babies say bye. Alfie, you want to come say bye? Alfie, come here. Alfie and Simba are, Alfie is Simba's nemesis. So look, he's going to try to get Alfie. Simba, be nice to Alfie. Simbers, this is what happens. All He's like, let me get my dog. Can you be nice to Alfie? We're going to be nice. No, Simba. He doesn't know how to be nice to Alfie. Be nice. I'm going to put you down if you attack Alfie. There you go. You can get down. Alfie's a good boy. He's a good boy. All right. Have a wonderful day, guys. It was so nice to see you. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will talk to you guys soon. Stay healthy and stay beautiful. That's so funny, Abby. Seriously, they do it all the time. Um, I don't know if it will ever stop. I don't know if you've had yours for a long time, but the cat just, he just wants to get the Yorkies. It's like his, it's his mission in life. So enjoy your day. We are going to go out on a beautiful walk while it's still late. And I will talk to you guys later. I hope to see you guys next Sunday. Bye.